Good morning. Merry Christmas. It is Christmas morning, very early. I am sitting, hi Kennedy. I am, you're not helping. I am sitting outside um, in our screened in porch area. Do you see the silly dog? Kennedy, it's okay. Hi, good girl, okay, off. Shh, hey, off. Everybody's very tired because their schedules are off. Okay, so, Velocity had her puppies on Thursday, um, which was early. And uh, she also had 11 puppies we were expecting eight, maybe nine. I had every intention of filming the whole thing. I had the best laid plans. <laughs> None of that happened. So what I'm gonna do is tell you, off Sega, I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened um, and what's been going on over the last few days. And I'm going to put up lots of pictures and videos and do a little bit of voiceover here so that you don't have to look at my craziness. Um, but as you can imagine, uh, Suze and I have not gotten a lot of sleep. So you get what you get. <laughs> so anyway, let's just dive right into it. So on Thursday, um, it was like right after lunchtime. Let me back up. Thursday morning for about, I would say five or six minutes, Velocity showed some nesting behaviors. However, um, her temperature did not drop and it wasn't full-blown nesting behaviors. She, basically, we have these laundry baskets that have blankets and pillows and things in them for them to get in because sometimes dogs like to curl up in something that, you know, is a tight, enclosed space. Um, and the laundry basket is big enough that it can support a standard poodle. So she was getting in the laundry basket and she was bedding down and I thought, okay, if this goes on for an extended period of time, then this is definitely nesting behaviors. If not, then this is just normal, her, you know, fluffing up the bed before she gets in it type deal. So she did it for a normal amount of time. And I thought, okay, if she does it again, then I'll know this is the beginning of nesting behaviors. She never did it again. That was Thursday morning. And then Thursday, um, Suze only had to work a half day. So she came home from work and she was like, hey, I've got um, my family's presents wrapped. I'm gonna go ahead and um, put those in a bag and take them over there so that they can be under the tree. I said, okay, perfect. I had some work stuff that I needed to finish up, so it was all good. So Suze leaves, and about 30 minutes later, Velocity comes up to me, and she's pawing at me that she wants to go outside. And I was like, oh, okay, well, we had just gone outside not that long ago, but because she was so pregnant, <laughs> She was drinking a lot of water and going out very often. So I was like, all right, we'll go outside again. So I go to finish up just very briefly what I'm doing on the computer. I stand up and she is squatting. And I can see from her stance and the tightness of her abdomen that she's having a contraction. And I was like, oh, okay. 
I, I guess we're having contractions now. So I immediately took her into the whelping box. Um, unfortunately, where she proceeded to pee, but it, you know, it wasn't anything she could do about it. So, um, I am getting the stuff together to clean up the pee when I see that there's a puppy crowning. And I was like, okay, we're having a puppy now. So I get that puppy birthed. Velocity did fantastic. She did um, everything herself. Of course, as soon as the puppy was out, I opened the sack and was clearing the airway, um, which you don't want to wait to do. And she took care of the umbilical cord. She was not too rough with the puppy. Um, some of the issues that you see with first time moms, she didn't do any of that. She was fantastic. So I've got the puppy. I'm trying to get him dry. She's helping me. And I have my phone and I try to call Suze and she doesn't pick up. So I call Suze's mom and I'm like, hey, everything's okay, but are you at home because I'm trying to reach Suze and she didn't pick up her phone. And she's like, no, I'm at the grocery store. <laughs> I was like, okay, um, I don't know if I have the house number in my phone. Can you please call and tell her to come home right now? Because we are having puppies right now. And she was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, okay. So she calls Suze and um, I'm, I'm just waiting for her to show up. I'm sorry. It's very early. So I'm waiting for her to show up. And um, it feels like forever. And at this point, I've got this puppy dry. I've got the heating pad set up inside of a small dog bed so I can keep this puppy warm. And Velocity is already pushing when Suze arrives. And God bless her. She jumped right in. It was like, it was like, it was like a saving grace. It was fantastic. So she jumped right in and proceeded to deliver the puppies. Now I am standing by, I am helping with cutting cords and doing these things, but I have a lot more experience birthing puppies than Suze does. And I had already decided that I really wanted her to do the majority of it so that she could gain more experience. And she was phenomenal. You guys, when I say that she was like a pro, I mean, she was a pro. She did great. And at one point when we got to, I think it was number four and number five, she actually had two puppies back to back. She and I were both working puppies at the same time. With, I mean, I think maybe there was a, um, when we recorded it, there was like a, um, on the paper, there was like a four minute gap. Puppies back to back. So we got to number eight and shortly after number eight, she started pushing again and I was like, okay, we're gonna have nine. And then nine turned into nine, 10, another two back to back. And then she stopped and I was like, okay, okay, we're done. We're just gonna have 10. So then after number 10, she wasn't having any more contractions. I couldn't feel anything. And I, and I was like, okay, we're just gonna, we've got all the puppies clean, dry, warm. We're gonna get them on her, get, get them nursing. Um, and we're just gonna stand by and watch. Okay, well, long part of that story short. Um, in the middle of nursing all of her puppies, Probably about, I 
want to say 20 or 30 minutes later, she had another puppy. So now we're at 11. So, um, she did fantastic. She didn't have any issues. We, uh, I think we had one or two that were breech, which is normal. Um, we didn't have any that got stuck. I mean, she was just, bless her heart, she was just pumping them out. She really was. And Suze was catching them. Um, she did deliver one of them standing up, which, uh, you know, is not uncommon, especially for larger dogs with a larger litter. Um, you know, it's easier. <sighs> Sorry, I had to yawn. It's easier to bear down when you're standing up and squatting. So, um, Masseuse did great. She caught the puppy. She was, I mean, she was just... You would think that with Velocity doing all the work that Velocity was the star of the show. No, it was, it was Suze. She was definitely the star of the show. <clears throat> she was just fantastic. I, I'm super proud of her, in case you hadn't noticed. So we got, um, got all the puppies delivered. And we were done by maybe 5.30 or 6. I think it was over. So, very quick, very quick. She started probably around one. So it, it happened very fast. I had to pause the video there because I needed to um, check the camera to see if Velocity had moved. Um, one of the things that I've been working on with her is her self-awareness right because initially she didn't she wanted to be close to the puppies of course but she didn't understand that she needed to lay next to them and have them come over to her rather than lay on them like an egg um thankfully she did catch on very quickly and so now what she does is um and I'll put up some pictures and some videos so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I put the heating pad more towards the middle of the whelping box. And that way what she can do is the puppies will naturally stay on the heating pad, right? Because it's warm. If they're full and they've pottied and they're happy, they'll stay on the heating pad. So that means that when she gets into the whelping box, she can lay down around any side that she chooses, right? And I've been teaching her to lay down beside the whelping, the heating pad. And that way she can then put her legs out, right? And the puppies can get right over to her. And it's been working fantastic. Um, mostly because Velocity is fantastic. So she has been catching on very quickly. Um, there was, in the beginning, a time when she was trying to pick them up and bring them to her, and she did it very gently, um, but it, it wasn't working out the way she wanted it to, um, because they would just kind of, you know, she would set them down next to her, and they would kind of roll off of her side, and then they were just kind of right there flopping around. Anyway. This system works better, and I, I think she realizes that. Um, she's been eating fantastic. She's been eating like a horse, which is great. Um, for those of you who um, are longtime followers, you'll know that Velocity is not a big eater, um, which is common with poodles. So the um, I'm doing a mixture of cottage cheese, ricotta cheese, a, ca a powdered calcium supplement with vitamin D, um, eggs, whole eggs, um, meat, various meats, and her 
regular vitamin, right? The NuVet wafer. Sorry, you'll have to bear with me because my brain is not working. Anyway, she's, she's getting a lot. Um, I've doubled her calories. Oh, fenugreek. I'm also including a fenugreek supplement. Right now, I've got her at a very low dose just because I don't want her to be um, in a position where she's producing too much milk. And for those of you who don't know, fenugreek can help uh, stimulate milk supply. But because she's got so many puppies, um, and because there were so many, some of them are on the smaller side, I really want her to keep that milk supply up. And what I've been doing is I go in multiple times um, and make sure that the smaller puppies, there's like four or five that are on the smaller side, smaller than I would like. And um, we call them the cinnamonies. <laughs> so I go in and I place just the small ones on her. And then the bigger puppies will be on the heating pad, right? Fat, happy, pottied, sleeping, taking a nap. That way the cinnamonies have a chance to feed and still have a little bit of competition, but it's not the same level of competition as those bigger puppies, if that makes sense. Um, having competition while eating will actually stimulate puppies to eat more. So I don't want to bottle feed them because that could affect her milk supply, right? Because it's supply and demand. If there's less demand, then she'll produce less. Um, so yeah, anyway, so we're doing kind of this rotation. And then when Velocity has her potty breaks, sometimes she'll go in and she wants all of the puppies on her, in which case I, I let her do that. Um, and there have actually been quite a few times that she has gotten a couple of the cinnamonies and woken them up from being on the heating pad, just them, like two of them, and encouraged them to come over and nurse on her as well, which I was pretty impressed by, not gonna lie, especially for a first time mom. But we are, we're watching like a hawk. We have um, an app on our phones, camera in the room with night vision. Hey, shh, bear. Sorry, <clears throat> there's dogs barking out here. So anyway, everybody else is doing great. Um, well, before I get into everybody else, so we started off with 11 puppies. We are now down to nine. Um, <clears throat> I know that that can be very jarring for people, especially those who are not used to uh, breeding. But sometimes when you have a litter that is this large, um, especially because she went into labor early, sometimes the puppies are just not ready. Um, and that's what happened with those two. We think that they, they just, they needed more time. So, but that's okay, because they um, passed very peacefully, they were warm, they were happy. Um, I specifically held one of them while he passed so that he wouldn't feel alone. Um, <clears throat> dogs have kind of like a, a sense about these things, so Velocity had really stopped trying to care for them once it got to that time. Um, anyway, so I just held them and loved them and kept them warm and comfortable until they passed. Um, <clears throat> technically, we're not out of the woods yet. Um, and that was one of the things that Suze and I had a conversation about. 
<clears throat> because, you know, this is a big litter. And she went into labor early. So every day is precious. Every day is one day stronger that those puppies are. And um, we're just not out of the woods yet. So we're doing our very best. I'm using um, the Dog Zymes Puppy Support and um, you know liver water and a couple of other things, especially for the cinnaminis to make sure that everybody is doing well, and they are. Um, but sometimes these things can't be explained. Um, you know, and you just, you, you kind of got to go with it. I know that there are a lot of breeders out there that go above and beyond when it comes to puppies that are fading, puppies that, you know, need resuscitation, right? Um, this is one of the things that Suze and I went over very early before we started breeding because I over many many years have seen where breeders have gone to great lengths to resuscitate a puppy or you know for a fading puppy only to have that puppy you know four, five, eight weeks later have serious issues, or six months later, or a year later, and all of a sudden that puppy is just riddled with health problems. And it kind of makes me wonder, did that happen because we are using what we know and what we believe to be right to circumvent nature. What are you doing on that table? You better get down. Off. Sega. They need to be groomed so badly. They have a grooming appointment, but we had to wait until after Christmas. Off. Sega's a mess. Okay. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of breeders out there who would disagree with me. They would say that, you know, they would do whatever it takes, blah, blah, blah. It, everybody has their own way of doing things to each their own. But for me, if I'm doing everything that I possibly can, right? Everything that I've learned, everything I've been taught, I've exhausted all measures and it doesn't work, then it wasn't meant to be. It's kind of my philosophy. Anyway, um, yeah, getting super deep on you there. Sorry. Lack of sleep. Just make you crazy. Anyway, everybody else. So Sega is really, really, really curious about what is going on in that back room. She was so beside herself excited when Velocity finally came out of that room. Um, she was just worried about her. I mean, she just laid outside of the room, just laid there waiting for her to come out. Um, Gambit is mostly not thrilled that our schedule has changed. Um, he was doing really well on our schedule. And so now he's like, now what are we doing? Now we're staying up late and we're getting up early and we're, what's happening? Um, Kennedy is a little bit needier than usual. She's also barking right now. So, um, but other than that, everybody is, is doing really well. So, anyway. 
that's kind of the story of what happened. And this video is already very long, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and go see what Kennedy is barking at. I think she's barking at critters in the yard. Anyway, so yeah, um, stay tuned. I'll be making a video showing you guys all of the puppies. We're just trying to get them to their maximum healthy point before we do that. Yeah, and we'll keep you posted. We're going to be doing lots of updates, lots of videos, lots of pictures. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.